Hi guys, Renee Pizzotta here, Acting My Age. Welcome back, and if you're new to the channel, be sure and hit subscribe and come back every Wednesday for new videos. This week, I sat down with actress and screenwriter Kate Siegel. We talk about her journey, body image, and how being a mother has changed her acting. We also talked about what it's like collaborating with her husband, director Mike Flanagan. She starred in several of his horror features, including Oculus, Ouija, Origins of Evil, Gerald's Game, and Hush, which she also co-wrote. But you may know her best from her chilling turn as Theodora Crane in the Netflix series The Haunting of Hill House. Where'd you get those, Allie? At the mall. <clears throat> Practically begged me. She has to be like her cool Aunt Theo. I did not. Nope. You're finishing the Brussels sprouts. You're on fire today, Mom. I'll watch it, Captain Lame. Both of you. They're delicious. They smell like cat piss. I so said, watch your tone. Kate. Hi. Welcome. You're welcome. Thank you so much for doing this. I really, really appreciate it. Oh, my pleasure. It's so funny. We were just chatting before this started, and to see us drop into like yeah. professional <laughs> on camera like, mode. Hi. Hi. How are you? <laughs> Tell me, where where are you from? I grew up outside of Washington D.C. Mm. in Rockville, Maryland, and then. I went to school in Syracuse, New York, got my BFA, went back to DC, did some Shakespeare there. Ooh. And then I had a total burn where um, I got cast in a play and then fired after the table read. Oh my God. And it was heartbreaking. It was like my second professional job. And I remember thinking, if I'm gonna get shit on, I'm not getting shit on in Washington fucking DC. <laughs> And so I was like, flip a coin, yeah. and it was L.A. Oh, that's great. And then it was 13 years to an overnight success. Right. People don't realize that. It's crazy. It is um, this weird lottery where you, it could be any amount of time. Totally. Some people, it's like two weeks. Like yeah. Victoria Pedretti, who plays Nell, mm. we were her first professional job out of right. college. That's great. And she was fabulous. She was fantastic. And it's, whoop, she's now going to be on you. She's yeah. like the new thing. And so for her, it was... A very short amount of time yeah. and then for me it just took a while for yeah. me to settle into it and I think it's I don't know I don't know which one is better you know I, I don't regret the torture I put myself through because I feel like it it created a less self-centered human being mm -hmm. but I do wish that it didn't hurt as much getting here yeah, yeah. so now you have two children I have two children two years and four months and mm -hmm. four months how has it changed acting for you God, you know, I, you know this because we did an audition class together when I was at peak crazy. Like I could not, I could not find my groundedness. And um, people kept saying like, you need to care a little bit less. And I was like, no. I can't, this is my whole everything. And, and I was, I was, I, in retrospect, I was coming across as a little bit um, petulant because of desperation. And the exhaustion of parenthood has made me give zero fucks. Because I have two things. One is, I now no longer look to acting to make me feel loved, mm. which was something I really was mm. suffering from that I didn't know. That I was, that the validation and it made me feel loved and important and seen and special. And now I have my family and my family loves me and they see me and I'm important to them and I, you know, feed them with my body <laughs> yes <laughs> and so I don't need that from acting anymore That's and great. so if I fuck it up and then that did all the thing my teachers told me for years which was it opened up this whole world for me where it didn't seem so precious in the room mm -hmm. or on the on the day but my problem was always auditioning my pro on the set I was fine because it's yeah. collaborative mm -hmm. and it's fun mm -hmm. and if this thing happens in your head do I want to be a star or do I want to be an actress and and like everyone watching is going, actress, obviously you want to be an actress. <laughs> but like really, like you sit with that for a second yeah. and go, because I remember the day when I accepted that being an ingenue movie star, that window had closed for me. Mm -hmm. That I was never going to be a 23-year-old like Jennifer Lawrence. Mm -hmm. And that window was done. That was not going to be my path and having to let that go. And I wonder, I wonder what would happen. And then like my whole life opened up because yeah. I stopped trying to be something I clearly yeah. wasn't. 
but I wonder what would happen if I just accepted what does approaching 40 look like? What does a 40 year old face look like? Mm -hmm. What does an approaching 40 year old body? Sure. And just bring that into the room. I think. You know, yeah. it's interesting. I was watching this great movie called uh, The Wave, mm. which is a, I think it's Norwegian mm -hmm. horror film about mm -hmm. a disaster movie, but it's done like a small family drama. Fabulous. And the mom, who is probably in her mid 40s, had had no work done. Mm -hmm. And I just couldn't stop staring at her face thinking it was so beautiful, yes. but that it was so revolutionary <laughs> to be watching a woman in her 40s who had had no work done. Yeah. And I just was like, I hated myself for thinking it was brave. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, but I did. I yeah, did. Yeah. I thought it was brave and beautiful. And I was like, I hope I have the cojones to do yeah. that. Because I can't do anything now because I'm breastfeeding. Yes. And I haven't done it yet because I can't. Don't do it. And I hope that I can. You're a beautiful girl. Thank Don't you. do it. <laughs> I hope. I, I'll never say never because yeah. I don't want to see this tape in 10 years and be like, ah, oh, man, I totally lied to myself. Yeah. But I do hope that I can remember that actress in yeah. the wave and be yeah. like, it was so much more beautiful. Her performance seemed so layered. Mm -hmm. Her, like, it just was so nice to see. I think There's people life. want that. There's life, life lived on people's mm -hmm. faces. So yeah. when you take all that away, it's just, yeah, it's beautiful and it's a flawless canvas, but there's no life. It's, it's such a know? weird thing. I think about it every day, yeah. multiple times a day, <laughs> my body in the world. And I don't, I don't know why it seems like such a, a scandalous thing for us to be sitting here talking about. Like, yeah, it shouldn't be. My, like my belly be bothers me. <laughs> and, but nobody, a good wardrobe person will put you in a bathing suit that makes you feel beautiful. Yes, yes. A good wardrobe person is going to put me in an outfit that makes me feel beautiful. Absolutely. And, absolutely. and it shouldn't have anything to do with anything. It should, no. I don't, I can't, I can't comprehend it. And it, it's really been on my mind quite a bit recently. I guess yeah. maybe be, that's one of the answers to how has parenthood train, changed me as an actress. I am heavier than I was before. And that should be it, right? It yeah, should just yeah, yeah. stop there. But instead, these actresses and actors walk around beating ourselves up about like, my body isn't this, my body isn't that. I'm, that's the reason I didn't get the job, which none of those things Absolutely. really are true. And they say this, and this was impossible for me to understand as an uh, actor who wasn't working. Like, it's just your essence. You just don't know. You just don't know what they're looking for. And so anything you put in front of you, between you and the role, be it body image issues or um, what other, whatever bullshit you're worrying about on the day, rent, um, wanting to be loved, all of that stands in the way of you getting a role because you're obfuscating the energy from coming through, Absolutely. in my opinion. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, you studied at the Beverly Hills Playhouse. I did, yeah. Yeah, how yeah. long were you there? Oh gosh, um, eight years. Wow, yep. wow. I was summer. there for three years and thought I was there for a long time. Yes. So I loved it. I loved going to, you obviously did too, or you were being held hostage. I don't know which. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I loved it. I And it was so immersive. The only problem I had with it is that I didn't do anything outside of class. It was yes. so all-encompassing mm -hmm. that I spent the first three years just doing that. But I cultivated yeah. a lot of relationships, people I'm still in touch with. I met my husband there. Yeah. You know, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that came out of that. How important do you think acting classes are? Hugely important. Yeah. For me, the BHP was a conservatory style experience for the first four years. Mm -hmm. Like you said, I, could, I didn't really do anything else. Mm -hmm. I didn't have the time because I was so excited. I remember before I found it, it felt like I was wandering in the desert and I was really thirsty. And I found this place where everybody was as obsessive about scene work as I was, mm -hmm. which is where I would send people who like got their BFA and they're hearing things like, you're too big or you're too theatery. And I'd be like, go to the BHP, go work out that desire. People build entire sets for their scenes. People are deeply committed to doing strange things from like, Happy Days, and not the TV show, like the woman who's up to her neck in sand. Very and obscure. And from anything. You from can anything. do anything you, you want. Anything you want. You could write your own There's thing. There's a whole whatever. theme of electras. Like we did like 12 electras in a row one month. <laughs> That's great. And so, yeah, that was super important to making me feel like I had a home base and I was understood and a community. And I think a good acting class does all of that. Haunting of Hill House. That was a really cool retelling of that story. How, how involved, did Mike write that? Mike or, wrote it. Okay. Mm -hmm. that, it was, I did the play in like the early 90s and yes. I also played Theodora. Theodora. She's fabulous. I love her. Shout out to the Branchville uh, Country Theater in New Jersey. 
Um, but you know, super yeah. fun role. And and what I really loved about this, as someone who knows mm-hmm. the source material really well, was that so much of it was still true yes. to the original story. Like yes. when Mrs. Dudley, when Anna mm-hmm. Beth Gish comes in and she's like, "No one will hear you in the night, in the dark." I was like, oh. Oh. Beth, everything. Uh, <laughs> you have no idea how hard that part was on paper, and she yeah. just came in making it look so good. She's amazing. She's amazing. Yeah. Um, I think that is like the genius of Mike Flanagan. Is he is somebody who can take a source material, rework it, and make it still feel like you're eating the same ingredients. Mm-hmm. But you guys have got like this really cool ensemble yeah, I, of people. I keep doing this but and give my husband a tongue bath in interviews. It's so <laughs> annoying because it makes his head big. Um, but that's something he does because you know and anybody who's working in film and TV knows that the process of making a TV show or a movie is exhausting mm-hmm. and terrifying and traumatic and that's also all the other good stuff and fun, but sure. it really is very very hard and one bad banana can ruin an experience. Sure. And Mike is very protective of his sets and very um, loyal to people who show up ready to work and fun to be around and easy to work with. Yeah. Those people are rare in this industry. Yeah. People who can leave their ego at the door and who are collaborative and prepared and talented. And that's all the way from like set PA to mm-hmm. number one on the call sheet. Mm-hmm. If he find when he finds them, he keeps them. Mm-hmm. And that makes his sets specifically a really exciting place to work. That's and cool. so people will turn down other jobs to get back on a Flanagan set because it is such a protected, safe space. Mm-hmm. And when it when it's not working like that, Mike takes it very personally. How is it working with your husband? Oh, you've done it a lot. Yeah, right? we love to work with each other. That's you know, great. and it is. Um, I feel lucky that I got to marry the most talented and kindest person I've ever met. Like I think he is. If I wasn't his wife, I would be a huge fan. Yeah. Like a fangirl fan. Yeah, yeah. I'd be <laughs> like show, Yeah, it would be a super <laughs> stalker. And so I feel lucky that um, he felt similarly about me. Yeah. And then I get to be with him, and the family travels. That's and, great. That's great. Yeah, and I sidestepped my greatest fear, which is auditioning. Yay! And dying alone. That's amazing. There you go. <laughs> Two birds, one stone. Yes. Last question. Yay! What's up next for you? So I am going to um, get my child weaned, <laughs> and then I'm going to continue to audition until uh, somebody puts me in something I like. And so I'm I'm being pretty picky right now mm-hmm. because working means I'm away from a newborn baby. Mm-hmm. And so it does have to be exceptional. Mm-hmm. And I'm not looking to play wives or mothers right now. I'm looking to find something weird. And so I told my reps to send me all of their crazy shit no one else will do. Okay. And so I'm looking for work right now until um, they decide who they want back for haunting. So that's coming back. Haunting got its second season pickup. Wow. And it is, um, it's going to be anthology style. Okay. It is The Haunting of Bly Manor, which is Turn of the Screw okay. by Henry James. Gotcha. And it will also pull in a bunch of other Henry James short stories. Gotcha. He wrote a ton of gothic yeah, horror yeah. fiction. Oh, that's amazing. And so um, there may be familiar faces, but we haven't, the cast hasn't been announced. Yeah, yeah. So no one can say anything cool. for sure. Well, that's it for this video. If you like what you saw, give it thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe and come back every Wednesday for a new video. I'm Renee Pizzotta, acting my age. Did you you named your daughter Theo, didn't you? I did. Ah, yeah, Theodora, because I got Theodora. pregnant during shooting, <laughs> and um, because Theodora Flanagan has the same number of syllables as Alexander Hamilton. Oh. So there's so many good songs to oh, be sung to. There's a million things she great. hasn't done. Oh, She's just a little baby. It. I love it.